Thank you, everyone. I'm Maria Castro, and I have a PhD on my children. <laughs> Thank you for taking the job to represent us and the services that you provide us. Thank you, everyone, for listening and for being here. I want to talk to you today from a common sense perspective, and I'll talk really fast. So should we implement a practice that is questioned by so many? If there, is there doubt that, on, that fluoride is safe or effective? And if in doubt, don't do it. That is the precautionary principle. Who has doubt? People in social media have doubt. We were liked 467 people in only seven months. I did a search just out of curiosity. Tons of people over the world questioned the safety of fluoride. I only found two groups in favor. Who has doubt? People all over the world. Many people signing this petition, 3,137 and counting. Out of those, there's 739 Calgarians and the rest of the breakdown that you see there. 2,074 Canadians think you should not fluoridate Calgary. And this is just citizens spreading the word. How many people would sign if we had any money for publicity? I don't know. Who else has doubt? Obviously, as you witness, scientists, researchers, and other people have doubts. So what do I think? If there is any doubt, there is no doubt. If there's any doubt, there is no doubt. And I have no doubt, my children and our story. My child had rashes, endless itching, weekly vomiting, and odd pains. And I went to this conference where I met a doctor, and this doctor said to me, put a filter that removes the fluoride and the chlorine. And so I did. And what happened? He improved. And I'm just going to tell this council that there's no scientist or doctor in this room or elsewhere that knows better than I do what is right for my children. And do you know what is total lack of common sense? That is total lack of common sense that the idea that toxic waste can promote health is blind perpetuation of dogma and total hubris. So do you know who has common sense? My kids do, smart kids do. I ask them to look at the council website. They look at your pictures and they say they don't know who you are. And I said, you know, these guys are making decisions for people and they may decide on something that will go into your body. And they said that this was creepy and scary. I'm just quoting them. <laughs> but wait, some doctors agree with my children. As per the Canadian Medical Protective Association, there is the definition of informed consent. Please read that definition, I beg you. The information must be as such that it will allow the patient to reach an informed decision. Well, with water fluoridation, there will be no informed decision. And then they go on to explain what is assault and battery. A physician may be liable in assault and battery when no consent was given at all. So we should use our critical thinking. Is fluoride good or bad? People say it is, people say it isn't, and science may never be settled. But the point is choice. The point is ownership of the most fundamental thing that any of us possess, our bodies. Is anybody here going to rule over the bodies of my children? So I'm a bit worried. Might not be medical assault, but I sure feel my kids are threatened. And I want to say this. It's not true that all these physicians represent the disabled. They are not representing the disabled because my son has a disability and he's harmed by fluoride. Nor do they represent all the poor people because I am Mexican, and I grew up with a family that was very poor. People in the rural areas, they're so poor, never visited a dentist, never had a cavity. And I have these questions from my counselor, who's not there anymore, but he was, and I want to know who's going to help me with these questions, because I do not consent. Are they going to guarantee that this is safe and effective for every single person? What are the solutions? I think that we should replace campaigns of fear with campaigns of health. 
That is common sense. There is no such thing as a fluoride, as a fluoride deficiency. And as it is for many current chronic illnesses and issues, it relates to lifestyle. Address the diet and the lifestyle, like those poor people I'm talking about, and then you will get rid of all of these issues. Ms. Please Castro, look into the your, new science. I will time wrap is it up. up. Okay. Yes. Um, and I just want to ask you to take a look at that. So we are saying that we care about the environment, but yet here we are wanting to dump a lot of toxic waste into the environment. I don't know. So please say no to artificial water fluoridation. Um, and I just want you to know that when we have to protect our children, we moms will continue to speak up. And I'm just a mom, but my children remind me every day that big doors swing on little shingles. I don't know how to say that word. It just escaped me, but you know what I mean. Thank you so much. <laughs>